And joining me now on set is CEO Joey Agri. Joey, thank you for being here. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having me. So uh, just looking at uh, your company, you own and operate a portfolio of 1,900 properties located in all 48 continental states and containing approximately 40.1 million square feet of gross leasable space. And, and a lot of people would say, post-pandemic, you guys are positioned in, in an awkward space in some, in some cases if you're dealing with the office market. Right. How do you see that shaking out in the years to come? Well, well, first of all, our, our retailers today are the largest retailers in the world. Like you mentioned, Walmart is our top tenant, Kroger, Best Buy, Dollar General, Tractors by Lowe's, Home Depot, AutoZone, O'Reilly. So they're the biggest and strongest retailers in the world today that, frankly, are, are, are benefiting generally from the trade-down effect we're seeing with the consumer today. So we think we're really well positioned, almost 100 percent occupied today. We collected all of our rent during COVID, and most of those retailers, frankly, thrive and survive. Why did they thrive? I mean, the whole story during the pandemic was, you know, everyone's going to order from Amazon and stay at home, and that's going right. to be at least a big percentage of the buying public out there. Right. But you're saying, you know, traditional drive-up, park-and-go-in-the-store retailers were also thriving. Well, they were thriving for, because they had, frankly, they made the investments historically to fulfill orders online, whether during the depths of the pandemic or in the, in the store. And so Best Buy had effectively all of their stores closed during the pandemic, but still was able to fulfill 90% of orders. And so today what you see with retailers are the retailers that have invested in their omni-channel distribution strategies, in labor, in price, able to fulfill no matter whether we're in a pandemic or we're, we're, we're in a traditional economy like we are. So how should we think about real estate when we think about uh, sort of commercial office uh, real estate and retail, your sweet spot? Yeah. I mean, there seems to be a huge delta there, right? There's a huge delta there, which I think is underappreciated generally by the market. We see tons of headlines out there, the commercial office, the commercial space, commercial real estate, the, the headwinds, all of these challenges. You feel that drags on your guys, even though they're performing? 100%. Investors today, general, generalist investors, individual investors are scared of the headlines. I mean, it's very reminiscent. It reminds me of five years ago, turn back the clock when I believe it was the journal three weeks in a row said Amazon's going to kill grocery. Amazon's going to kill pharmacy. Amazon's going to kill auto parts. And so you get the headline risk there, which really doesn't drive to the core essence of our business, which are extremely healthy retailers, which are providing essential goods and services to Americans every day. We were just talking in the previous segment about this post-pandemic rebalancing that we're seeing between people buying stuff during the pandemic and people buying services and experiences and a lot of the fun stuff now. How does that affect your guys? It really doesn't. I'll tell you, look, you throw $5 trillion in stimulus into the economy, you have zero interest rates, zero interest rates for a while, and, and you're going to have oddities, you're going to have surge sales, you're going to have, obviously, the, the retailers that were selling outdoor goods and services, the canoes, the kayaks, the gun sales went through the roof. Everyone got a pet and a bike yep. during the pandemic. Um, I already had a pet, but we got a bike. You can, you can get yeah. another one. Right? Right. So we're seeing the normalization of those trends now. Now it's slow, right? There's pent-up demand for travel and experiences. But again, our focus is always on non-discretionary, what we call omni-channel critical retailers, providing those goods and services that aren't luxury. They're not, they're not want-to-haves. They're must, generally must-haves for consumers. So what's the opportunity for you next? Where do you expand? Across the country. I mean, we are active. I mean, are there acquiring. types of markets that you're looking at? Is it you know, mid-sized cities versus big, big cities? I mean, primary markets to tertiary markets. Our tenants like Walmart and Dollar General, based all over the country today. We increased our acquisition guidance to over 1.2 billion dollars for the year. Our balance sheet is locked and loaded. Last year, we acquired over 400 individual properties across the country. I would anticipate a similar number of acquisitions, averaging between four and five million dollars per transaction. So all this talk that we have about you know, the Fed and a soft landing and where things are going, does that affect you at all? Look, it affects us generally with the yeah. interest rate environment and valuations. But what we're seeing today with a balance sheet like ours, we're an investment grade rated company, again, with over a billion dollars of liquidity at any given time, we're seeing opportunities. And so you, you, you throw the economy, the rising interest rates, the regional banking challenges that are out there, the 1031 transactions dropping by 50 percent today. And we're the buyer of choice. And so we're seeing a tremendous amount of opportunities, both from individuals as well as institutional sellers, to take advantage of it. You know, you roll back the clock to 2021, 2022, at least the first two thirds, it was free money and money for all. And so today, certainty and execution matters again. Yeah. Joey Agri, Agri Realty, thanks so much for being here.